Yay, here we are, we are live. Hey everybody, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel of your favorite or soon to be favorite bookworm drink supreme, but I can only assume that you are all, um, you know, resident viewers. If we get some new people, I'll give them a shout out. But yeah, hi everybody, hope you're all doing well. We are discussing Local Woman Missing Today by Mary Kabika and I'm joined by my lovely panelists. To my right, who are you? <laughs> the I person right know. next to me. <laughs> but I, I think our screens are different, but like I can introduce myself. Oh my first. gosh! Okay. <laughs> Lucha is next to me, so go. Okay. Oh, okay. Hi everyone, I'm Lucha. Nice to see you all again, and for like the new viewers, welcome. I hope you guys yes. have fun with us tonight. <laughs> love it, love it. All right, go ahead, Ava. Hi, I'm Ava. I'm the resident, um, how do you say mahalat in English? Yes. <laughs> the resident mess. The resident mess. We love that. <laughs> My God, look at me being bilingual. Like these guys have taught me so much like words. I love it. Anyway, so let's see the chat. Let's see who's in the chat. We have Ashley, who I think is new. Hey, Ashley. Hi, we Ashley. Oh, oh my gosh, welcome. Hey, Hi, we have MJ, Hi, MJ, and we have we have the person who will be getting a free subscription if I ever make a Patreon because this person is the real fucking MVP, Kim. Oh, oh, oh I just made an intro for you. Okay, yeah. So I hope you're all excited to read this book because today is gonna be fun, and the reason today is gonna be fun is because. There is a difference of opinion. I mean, we all pretty much had the same opinions on the Unhoneymooners, and we had the same opinions on Every Last Fear, and mm -hmm. we we all gave the same rating to that that other book that we all gave five stars to. Oh shit! They they never learn. Oh, right? they never learn. Here we all have quite drastically different ratings, so this is going to be pretty fun, I think. So yeah, um, just to give any refreshers for anybody who may be new. We're going to start off with our questions. There's going to be a non-spoiler section and then a spoiler section. And then we're going to get to your chat after every segment. So please answer along with the questions because you are, you are as much a part of this as we are. And yeah, let's begin. So the first one is what I am so excited for. What rating did you give the book and why? OK. Let's start with, I think, uh, Hi. last time, I think Ava should go first this time because this is the number, I am so excited for your number, honestly. Our group chat was lit this week. <laughs> go. Hi, Nikki. Right, Nikki said, we have a Nikki here. Hi, Nikki. Hi. Nikki here. All right, Ava, go ahead. Your number and your non-spoiler review. All right, so I give it a three. Because I thought about it a bit more. and then, We did not expect this, given your I know, I think, this week, girl. I know. No, because I changed my rating from a 2.5 to a 3. Because upon reading it again, I do realize that it has its merits. But then, later we'll be discussing a, a bit more on why I just gave it a 3. But it was just okay for me. Okay. So your thoughts have, like, spoilers in them that we can't really disclose at this point? A lot. <laughs> a lot. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm ready. Lucha, go ahead. Go for it. Okay. So my score was actually, well, okay. My first score was a 3.5. And then I kind of shift from 3.5 to 2.5. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. But I think my, my score should be higher than Ava's. So I'm going to go with a 3.5. <laughs> so I liked it more than she did. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so overall, like I gave it a three because, okay, so I started with, because I really, I did enjoy it. Like I read it really quickly in like two days, mm -hmm. um, but I just kind of had to deduct points because I just, I'm so bothered by the fact that there were, I just felt like there were so many scenes that were kind of just inserted and towards the end, it had no relevance whatsoever. Yeah. And that yeah, really just bothers me. Red herrings in this book. <laughs> Yeah, and that really bothers me because, like, you know, I'm kind of a new thriller reader. So what I, the one thing I always look forward to is kind of like 
you know, I like all these exciting things happening, all at, like different points, and I don't know what how they all connect, and I just like seeing yeah. it all con- in the end. But that did not happen in this book. <laughs> so, so there. To you it felt um, well. I can't really discern what Ava thought, but to you, it felt uneven and disjointed. And yeah. the red herrings. I'm assuming a lot of the red herrings didn't work because you said that they were point that they felt rather pointless, and I don't disagree with that like there were quite a lot of subplots that i think were honestly just thrown in to make yeah. you to throw you off on who to get on who the killer was yeah especially well i don't want to get into spoilers but like we'll get into them at some point because i have notes and i have questions and i see a new face hello raja hello hello how are you hello. <laughs> also, to everybody who's read the book please um leave your chats please uh leave your stars in the chat yeah. Um, I see some ratings here, and we have Ashley gave it a five. We love to hear it. And we have June, who gave it a two. So we have, everybody, everybody has a score for this. Scores are so different. It's so interesting. I know. I love this. Like, I mean, this is the first book, to be honest, that we as a panel didn't pick. Because normally it's like I pick the book, and then Marina picks the book. But this time, we literally could not come to a consensus. So we came up with some books. And then I put a poll on Instagram. I mean, I put, a, I put a poll on YouTube. And this book was voted for by you guys. So you picked a book that had some very, that was very polarizing. Very, very polarizing, <laughs> to say the least. So I love that. I love that. And we have, I see Kim gave it three stars. See, so I think Kim and Ooh. Ava are like kind of in the same ballpark. And hi, MJ. I think you're new. Hello. Hi, welcome. And I'm really glad you love MJ is new and MJ gave it five stars. I'm really glad you love the book, MJ. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. Okay, so for those of you who um, just came in, what I'm saying, what I said before was that we're gonna divide this show into several questions, which are the segments, and then after each segment, uh, hopefully you answer the questions also, and then we will get to your chats after each segment. So, yeah, I can't wait to hear from you. The second thing is, um, all right, so I'm going to go next. I gave this book four stars. And the mm-hmm. reason I gave it four stars is because I was very entertained all throughout. And I realized this that this is like a more generous rating than what other people gave it. But I feel like the thing, the, the thing with me is like, with thrillers is like I don't go in expecting something good especially with a book called Local Woman Missing. Like, can you get any more generic with your title? I was like, okay, I'm going to assume that a woman's going to go missing, but am I going to be entertained? And this is going to make, like, a modicum of sense in the end. Because there are some thrillers that literally, like, Survive the Night by Riley Sager, which literally just... Why, though? Like, <laughs> okay, Ava's living for this. <laughs> um, and although this wasn't perfect, and I do have my complaints... I had just way too much fun. And I love thrillers that are written like this. Like, I love to give credit to authors who take it upon themselves to write from multiple points of view because it's really, really hard. Like, you really have to plan it so much. Like, you have to, like, have a timeline and you have to, like, know which character to put in what part of the timeline. And have, and especially if your story is non-linear like this one. Like, this wasn't linear. This wasn't, like... Someone in the beginning, someone in the middle, someone in the end. Like, this was, like, as you said during our group chat, like, it was all over the place. Like, we, there were time jumps nonstop. And the fact that, like, Mary Kabika was able to get me, have me guessing until the very last page and construct a story that was just so, like, uh, was just, like, lovely. And, like, the fact that it was, like, so time jumpy and kept changing perspectives, it was, like, solving a puzzle, like, I was like, it was like she made a puzzle, she and she was like guiding me through it. And as I was like putting the puzzle pieces together, I started seeing the bigger picture. And I liked some things, I didn't like some things, but overall, I had a lot of fun putting the puzzle together. So that's why I enjoyed this book. Is it perfect, like every last fear? Absolutely not. But did I have a lot of fun? Yes, I did. To that, I will not deny. <laughs> so that's my non spoiler review. And those are my thoughts. And yeah, I think we should maybe, well, let's see, my I have my other question is, what did you like most about the book? So um, 
I think I inc I think my answer for this was was baked into my answer that I just gave. So I'm gonna go with uh, Luce. I think Ava went first. So what did you like most about the book, Luce? Okay, like is can we can we is this the, like the non spoiler part already, or are we still in the non spoiler part? Or oh, if you want to get into spoilers, I'm gonna have to put my banner up. But I think oh, we can I mean, get into spoilers I'm, now. Yeah, I'm girl, I'm I'm just, I feel like there's just way too much to talk about that. We, I don't. I mean, like, I, can't I don't be completely think... spoiled, like, in all honesty. <laughs> I know. I mean, I. The, this is the kind of book that I honestly don't think we can discuss in a vague way that would do justice to the book. So I think we should probably get into spoilers now. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I'm just gonna put my banner up. But yeah. Anyway, spoiler warning: if you haven't read the book, we are gonna go into spoilers now. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so the what I really liked about the book was actually like well characters that I like were um, Meredith. Well, I like Meredith at the start. Meredith was the mom, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I confuse the name. Yeah, the Meredith's the mom, and also like Leo's perspective. Like I enjoyed those parts. I like Meredith at the start because I really admired her advocacy for you know um, pregnant women, like how she like really wanted to be there to support them. And there were like some lines that I just really appreciated. Like um, this one where she talks about um, like, again, like how like in like when in during labor, like women aren't like there's like the concept of consent during labor, like something that's not something that kind of just occurred to me before. So I appreciated that discussion. So and then, yeah, there, there's a line that goes, a common belief during labor is that the baby's needs supersede that of a mother's. Women don't always know they have options. So that, that was an interesting discussion for me. And then there was this other line about postpartum depression. And like, and it goes like, the media has sensationalized postpartum depression, made it out to seem like all women who suffer are the kind to kill their children. So it's not true. Postpartum psychosis is something else. So that is a very true um point and that was i appreciated that the author inserted that i mean it's a point for it's personal preference because i do have a tendency to really appreciate more of a bit of a more feminist perspective on things so yeah i really like that i really like that part but then she got like really annoying towards the end like she made some like really questionable decisions yeah yeah <laughs> yeah Okay, then, Ava, what did you like most about the book? Hello? Eva? Sorry. Your turn. Oh, it's, your turn to, it's your turn to say what you like most about the book. I was a bit distracted with you. Because <laughs> here's the thing. I usually read books and then have like a primal like reaction to it. Mm. And that's how I usually just go by. Because, I mean, that's the reason why I can't be a booktuber at all. Because <laughs> I don't have like deep thoughts on it. But then the one of the things that I do like is I do agree with Duce. I I like the fact that there were these points that Meredith had made. That, like she is a good doula. I have to admit. Like she mm -hmm. is really good at her I job. I didn't even know doulas existed before. I didn't even know I knew that those existed, but I didn't know that doula is what it was called, to be honest. No, I actually knew, but then no, because my my family tends to go by like the non-traditional way. So I do know that doulas existed. But then it's like seeing it from that perspective, I do appreciate all the more. So that's one thing I do like. I really like the beginning, no lie. Because I really went in, I, I really like messaged Lucha about it. And then I told her, does it go on? Because it was really uncomfortable reading about it. It was like super uncomfortable. Which I Wait, do we can, like. We can, we're in we're in spoilers now. Like, are you talking about the beginning with the couple that kidnapped the two kids, oh, the, the two kids, yeah. Gus and um, oh what's her name, God. Delilah, and like kept them in the dark for like shit. I mean, like, can you imagine not like I'm like, wouldn't you go blind if you didn't see any light for that long amount of time? I mean, like, no, but, right? No, but here's the thing. No, I do understand that. But then the thing with that is, I didn't know what local woman missing was about. So I came in Me thinking also. about kidnap. No, it wasn't about the kidnapping. So I was really worried, and then all that, all those feelings had 
bridled into something like it got me so worried to the point that I had to ask Lucha if it goes on because I was very uncomfortable in the beginning, which I do think is a strength. And that's why the end had disappointed me so much because it had so yeah. much potential. No, actually not just the end, the middle. <laughs> Starting somewhere. When Kate started speaking, Kate, Meredith, when it was like, okay, it went kind of downhill for me. Uh, Leo's chapter is really good for me. Mm. Meredith's okay. at first. At first, but <laughs> it's not kind of modeled in the middle. And then, yeah, no, I think I have a lot more to say on the bad part. Of it. Oh, we're going to get into that right. We're going to get into that next. But if I'm oh, going to yeah. give me... Yeah, yeah, the wait, really good. The so, writing, yeah, the writing was... Well, I enjoyed the writing, but what I wanted to say was that I think this would work better as an audiobook because there are so many descriptions and there are like giant paragraphs of, you know, Marina was right. Like she gets repetitive in her own paragraphs. Like she would say the same thing repetitively in a paragraph to like try to convey tension. And I thought that that worked for me as a viewer because I mean, as a reader, because when I was listening to the audiobook, I, I mean, what do you do when you listen to an audiobook? You do tasks, you do the dishes, you go out, you walk around. So I would, when I was like walking around in my garden, alone listening to this book like I was getting like creeped out I was like especially in the part when Cassandra said that she saw two people outside of the house of Meredith that one night and I was like I feel like I'm being watched in this garden yeah yeah yeah. I feel like yeah and honestly and the narrator was really good like that you know like audiobooks aren't you know, like Google Translate or like Siri talking, like the people that they, that read audiobooks are like actual voice actors. And when I was listening to that audiobook, like this narrator was like really like going for it with the intensity. I was like, okay, all right. I was like, I was getting creeped out, was what I'm trying to say. So I feel like if Marina had listened to this on an audiobook, and the reason I bring her up is because Marina may not be here, but she gave us her rating. And she gave this book a 1.5 out of 5 because she was not a fan. And the writing was like a huge point for her that she didn't like, which is why which is why it occurred to me, like, why was she bothered by the writing? But I was not. And then, okay, it must have been because she had, because like, if you were to look at those giant paragraphs with your eyes, like, I mean, it's true. It is repetitive and it is chunky and it is like not something that you would fly through. But like, as a listener, I was like, wow, this is like a really fun radio play that's coming to life. And it was like a radio play because as Ava said, that kidnapping thing takes a back burner into subplots involving cheating and husbands and domestic abuse. So I was like, this is a radio play. This is a soap opera radio play. And I'm not pissed because I was really entertained nonetheless. But yeah, also I love how you brought up the doula thing because she charges a thousand dollars that's like how much over here. I mean, <laughs> like she charges an arm and a leg for what? Text messaging and being there during the birth. Like, I, can anybody like tell me? Cause like I, I was losing it just thinking about it. Can you like give me your opinions on this? I actually have no idea what the doula really yeah. does. So much sand. <laughs> yeah, was this book like an accurate representation of what a doula does? Because I was like, I'm going to be there because like Meredith said, I'm going to be there texting. I'm going to be there every step of the way. But then whenever someone would text her, she was like, I'm going to reply later because I'm ba- I'm showering my kid. It's like, they're, you're charging this much money and you're like, I'm going to reply later because I'm showering my kid. What the fuck? No, but <laughs> then that think, night, mm, go. I do think Meredith is a really good doula mm. in all fairness. Because she tries to involve, like she, she appears to be a good person. And like, someone who's close with you. So she becomes like a friend. So yeah. in building a relationship with your client, I do think that it adds another layer that makes them trust her all the more. Yeah. So I do like the fact that she had like, that she does tell her clients that this is happening with me and all that. Like, I do think she's a good dude. That's not like the point. I, I still think she's a stupid Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I think like well, I guess it's really like it's in in if you just like look at it from that perspective, um, just as somebody who's there, it it does kind of seem 
it is the same like overcharging but in effect if i if i kind of consider it like you are giving the support that the husband would never be able to do <laughs> like and i would pay money for that like because like yeah. i mean okay you can have a really great husband but they're never they're never going to understand what, that, what what's going on with their preggers and all that stuff like you need somebody there, somebody there who has experienced it and kind of walked you through it, especially if it's your first birth. Because like all the stories I've heard, like because pregnancy is different per per person, and like the stuff that you go through, because like the hormonal imbalances and like you know postpartum depression or depression while you're pregnant, like it's a lot to deal with, and especially if you're alone and you don't have like let's say you don't have you're not close to your mom or so all these other circumstances and you don't have that kind of moral support, it is necessary, I think. Yeah, I actually didn't think of that, but like, I really like how those aspects that you just said were baked into the story because we, I did, now that I look it back in retrospect, I do see those in Meredith. Like I do see that Mary Kubica did take care to establish that Meredith was capable of doing those things and why, you know, she was so important because the husband of Shelby was, they were cheating on each other, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, if he's gonna be with the other woman, and well, I mean, like, and then, but then the kid ended up being somebody else's. So, I mean, she's not completely off the hook, right? I, I'm not saying she deserved what happened to her, but that couple was not a power. The couple was not a power couple. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, before we get into the next segment, let's see what our audience has said. So, again, Kim three stars, and then Ashley said, "I enjoy the thrills and complex women." Well, these were definitely very complicated women. <laughs> and we are going to have some thoughts on certain women. I like how they're all very different. I know. I, I mean, now that, we're in this, yeah, now that we're in the spoiler section, can I just say that this book sets gay rights back, like, at least 10 years, honestly? <laughs> like, this is representation, if I ever saw, if I ever saw it. Um, it was kind of feminist in that sense. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, there was no Mary Sue, and the women were kind of like, well... Kate was a good person. <laughs> Kate was a good person. Kate was a good person. Kate Kate was a victim here. Josh was also a good person. Like we have to admit that the husband. Honestly, justice was... for Kate, justice for Josh. Like everybody else in this book is like, karma needs to be fired. <laughs> All right. So June says, I agree with Lucha's point. That's why I didn't give it one star. And I think this is probably the point that you said about the the women's, um, the postpartum thing. Yeah. And yeah, so I love that. And then she corrects herself and says star. And then I also went in completely fresh. MJ says, yes, I listened to the audiobook, And I think that added to my enjoyment. See, I'm not crazy here. I'm not crazy. I feel like, no, because like whenever I go on Bookstagram, it's the people who post their book reviews and say that they like that they listen to the audiobook that were more likely to give it like a five star or four star. And it's the people who read it, read it with their eyes, like Marina and you guys and Monica, who gave it one star. <laughs> Hi, Monica. Monica, we are so happy to see you. And Monica, okay, Monica, you're late, but you're right on time because we are going to go into our, wait, Meredith was stupid as fuck. Okay, thank you, June. So we're going to get into our next segment, and the next segment is what was your least favorite part? Oh, my gosh. I am so excited. Okay, who wants to go first? Hmm. I think Ava's thoughts. I can't know what Ava's thoughts. Do you guys want to hear that? No, because no, I gave it like. Right. Okay, I here's the thing. I want the oh, audience to answer this question as well, and they are going to answer while you're answering. But oh my god! Go yes. for it. Oh like, my god. Not... Go ahead, please. I'm so excited for this, Monica. I think prepare. we have the same thoughts of the badass. <laughs> we do, but then I think we interpreted it a bit differently. Yeah, and well, I kind of think... <laughs> oh, sorry. Here's the thing. The thing is that Ava actually um, read the ending of the book before she finished the book, and then she read the rest of the book knowing what the twist was. So she was able to identify logical inconsistencies in what happened. So I'm ready. Go for it. <laughs> here's the thing. The fact that I read like the ending first, and I, tend to, I, tended, to, uh, I tended to jump per chapter because I was a bit bored in the beginning and I, I 
my brain didn't want to process anything anymore. So I, I read the ending first just to see if it was worth it and then tried to jump in back. The fact that it made sense doing that as much as I as it did, like reading it chronologically, as in per chapter, it's already a bit foretelling of how over the place the book was. <laughs> like, no, I, I legit had to jump like from chapter to chapter just to keep myself interested. Yeah. And that's why, actually, now that I think about it, I might give it a 2.5. <laughs> Okay, I, I mean, I honestly, I don't mind that our numbers are changing throughout the thing because, like, when you talk about it more, like, when I read I'm Thinking of Ending Things, I gave it four stars. And then when I wrote my script for that book, I gave it five stars. So now that you're bloodletting all the hate out, I think I, that... I <laughs> think it's important. No, but then, I do understand where you're coming from now on why yeah. you gave it the four stars. Because it does sound like... What do you call this? Gossip. It sounds like chica. Which is the uh, Filipino word for gossip. Yeah. <laughs> There's this concept yeah. of a chismosa. Yeah. So someone who likes listening to gossip, who tends to talk around. What's that word again? Chismosa. 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 Okay. Chismosa is... vocabulary for people in the chat. Someone who Hello. likes to gossip around. <laughs> All right. And yeah, I do agree. Like, I mean, like, well, I was like listening to this book. I wasn't like, you know, riveted. I mean, I was invested, but I wasn't, like, riveted, like, I mean, like, oh, this book is saying something important. I was like, what's the tea? Who slept with who? <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I was, I was mm-hmm. as invested in this book as I was, as I am when I hear my neighbors fight. <laughs> like, <laughs> you see me at the window, like, right? The window, like, like, oh, shit. If you, if you think <laughs> about another that. woman home while she was gone, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> This should be a drunk review, I swear. <laughs> Actually, you should have now. Now that I think about it a bit more. But then, if you do think about it in that way, I do think you would give it a higher rating. But then since yeah. I came in like cold, I, I read it like a normal thriller. I didn't enjoy it as much as a thriller. Because the ending was so bad, in my opinion. It was like, <laughs> So fun. It was, it was so underwhelming. Do you want to jump to the ending? I swear, I swear, I need to rant because like this book ends with us finding out that the real Delilah was held captive by B, evil lesbian killer. So thanks for that, Mayor Kibika. Um, in her recording studio, was it or her attic? Her set, like I think it was a recording studio in the attic that they soundproofed, right? Oh, so yeah. no one could hear her, and so she was like rehearsing in the recording studio and writing her own music. When in reality, she was nursing a child into a sixteen-year-old. And here's the thing: it's like I have been in quarantine, and I don't think I could last. And I have access to like a house and a garden. This person had an air mattress and a closet. I don't know how they didn't like bite their own tongue out and bleed to death. Like I would have fucking lost it. I actually felt really like I felt bad for Delilah. I think there was I'm not sure if there was a line, but like and they were saying that there was like this little hole where she could like literally see her family and she just watches them from the like, middle of them, but she didn't that, yell like, like, Hey, help me out. There was a crazy bitch in this house. I mean like it sounds no, like, no, I don't I mean, understand. Through. I yeah, know that's one, but then I kind of understand because she was taken when she was really young at six, mm-hmm. around six, if I remember correctly, six or five. And yeah. it's like she wouldn't have done better, but then at the same time, I do think it was like a two extra. Like they made it that way to clear things up. And I don't like that in my thrillers when it doesn't, it, if it comes out of nowhere. Yeah. It literally, like, there was no indication that Lila was alive. <laughs> there was no indication that this was happening behind scenes. And I feel like the book would have been better if it focused on one story, uh, on one on one character's perspective. You see, I disagree. I kind of uh, like the fact that it was like, no, I mean, I don't disagree with you what you said before. I disagree with your thing about the one character perspective because I really like 
I mean, I normally like thrillers that are from the first person point of view of one person, but lately I've been appreciating, I mean, between this and Every Last Fear, yeah. the kind of thrillers that um, have a fixed story that you don't actually find out about until you read from multiple points of view and then you kind of see the broader picture expanding. I like that. I like that. So I think I like, I think, I, I think that kind of format served this story more, but like, I mean, go ahead. I'm, I'm curious. Ava no, and I thought about this, like, uh, we thought, we said that, I think it would have been way better, like, the book would have been way better if it was actually all in Leo's perspective. Because I actually think that Leo was the character with the most, like, depth <laughs> out of everyone. Because, like, to a certain extent, to a certain extent, because he, there was actual conflict with him, within him. You know, because like he was battling like being a neglected child by also but also accepting like this girl was supposed to be my sister. So I I appreciated that um you know that that kind of like level of depth and emotion, which was I don't know I didn't feel that in other characters. It would have been okay. entertaining to kind of see how he dealt with like how him viewing the entire process. It would have been might have been a bit better. Yeah, okay, so Leo, right? I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh my gosh, wait, what are we talking about? Yeah, um, Leo. Leo. Okay, I, I remember what I was gonna say. We were talking about Leo, and you guys didn't read the audiobook. I, in the audiobook, the person narrating Leo sounded like an evil 40 year old man. So oh, I was like, oh, I mean, I was like, like, like I was like, like after like the whole time I was I thought that Leo was like a child serial killer. Like I thought that the plot the plot was just gonna be that Leo was the one that killed his sister and that there was a cover up and that the mom going missing was like a completely unrelated thing and that it was just a coincidence that it happened on the same day and that there was gonna be a and then the, and that the fact that it was on the same day was like a red herring to make you think that Meredith was the one that had to do that had something to do with the daughter, but Leo was the one that killed her. And so they're covering it up as a family, low key, because Leo sounded literally evil. Like his narrator sounded like a literal, like the villain voice. And then when I re-looked at, when I looked at Leo's chapters again and read it with like the voice of a young boy, it sounded completely innocent and sweet. <laughs> I was like, this is really like, audiobooks are so, Audio books make so much of a difference, honestly. Like, it, I was literally like suspecting it. People who read the audiobook, please tell me in the chat if you had the same experience because I was like, this guy is sus, is super sus. Like, oh Leo sounded so bad. That was why I didn't suspect the doctor of being the killer because I was like, it's the kid. I anyway. honestly, for a while, I thought it was the lady cop that was the killer. I was like, she was the one who stands. She wasn't more. a killer. She was just a bitch. I know. I mean, I'm, an incompetent I, I, bitch. At one point, I was like, you know, it makes a bit more sense. Or maybe I just really found her so annoying that I wanted her to get arrested. Yeah. <laughs> know, but it, in all fairness, it is actually more left field for it to be Bea. I'm like a bit. No, I do agree with Mickey because I was like ranting with him. Then it set off what uh, they never learned had like put up. Because like Nate Neverland was very feminist. It was a very much fun feminist book. A thriller book. This one, on the other hand, had like lesbian killer. Like one dimensional lesbian killer. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they never learn. Both well, I don't want to call Scarlett Clark a lesbian, even though she ends up with a woman in that book, but maybe she's bi. Um, no, she's but both these books had women attracted to other women who were killers. But they never learned was like super feminist. This book was like misogynistic as fuck. Because let me just go through the list of women. You had Meredith, who was an idiot. You had Carmen, who was an incompetent bitch. You had Kate, who was completely naive the entire time. And you had Shelby, who was a what's the word? Like infidelity, you know, like a cheater who was that, that, a cheater, that, and, and then her husband accused her of like spending too much money. So like literally oh, yeah. every single woman was had like liter was defined by like something really bad in this book. <laughs> like beyond like there was like no broader picture to them. So when you sent that before our live show, Ava sent like a, a review of like I don't know some publication in the book saying like there was like fully human characters. I was like, 
definitely flawed. Did an intern <laughs> definitely flawed? But did an intern write this review? I mean, but, 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 mm. you know, they kind of got what Ashley had mentioned before. Because hmm. these are different women. It just so happens that we don't know the full picture. And I yeah. wish we did. Because I do think Mary Kubica. Uh, Mary Kubica, right? Yeah. yeah. So I do believe that she is capable. It just so happens that she isn't as good with the plotting. <laughs> but like, yeah. it, with the structure. I think there was too much going on. There was just too yeah. much going on to like really flesh out each character. Because like each yeah. character only had like, what, five pages? For a no, but the thing yeah. is the potential. That's the thing that persuades me yeah. the most. Because Delilah, with her one chapter, had like so much depth. Like I knew who she was. I knew yeah. what the situation was. And I knew mm. that she had and it's like if she had continued that until the end, if it was more of that type of thriller, I feel like this could have been a stronger. Movie. Yeah. Okay, so Ava gave her least favorite part, Lucha. Okay, I'm gonna go real quick, then we're gonna get to the chat. My least favorite part was also my what I the reason the reason this is my least favorite part is because this is the part that had like the most potential in the book. This is the part that I was listening to in my garden that had me the most scared. And this is when Kate and B, because in the book it's you know it's Bea, the way it's pronounced is Bea, but then like in the book the the audiobook person says B, so I don't know maybe in the U.S. it's pronounced B. So I I thought it was literally like B E E, and then when I looked at the book it was Bea. I was like oh okay. <laughs> so B, so Kate and Bea were in the house and someone cut the circuit breaker. And they suspected oh. that um, somebody had deliberately cut their circuit breaker and was infiltrating their house. No, it's infiltrating, <laughs> right? Infiltrating, hijacking their house. Anyway, so I thought that that was like a true moment of peril. Like so it was going to amount to something. But in the end, it ended up being that their whole street, and it was the whole street. And I was like, and it was because Kate was dumb and didn't look at her own street. She looked at the street across and assumed there's a killer in here. <laughs> I have another oh, comment on that part. I was yeah. so, I was Wait, not on. scared at all. I was, I was like, oh Man. my god, these girls are dumb. Like you think? It, no, I mean, like seriously, you, you, you're scared. You're scared out of your mind, and you think that there's a killer in your house. So what you do is go to the circuit breaker in the back when you have, you're close to your neighbors. You can walk to your neighbor's house and like call. Like, do you like what survival instinct is that? Like. I don't know. I mean, that's actually that's actually that's actually a really good point. I guess I didn't see that because I watch a lot of slasher movies, so I'm used to people running up the stairs as opposed to out the house. So I was like, it's a good change. It's a, I'm glad they're running outside of the house for a change. That was my thinking. They were running to, the, to like the the corner in the back. I was like, my god. Yeah, running but now that I think about it, they they ran um, outside of the house, but they ran to a different part of the house. So. Now when I'm they like, could have ran bitches. to the street to their neighbor and called for help, and I was like, I mean, yeah. So that's super <laughs> true. And the the reason I was so annoyed with that scene, and the reason why it doubles as my least favorite scene, is because it didn't amount to anything. It amounted to Josh coming over to pick up the dog, and I was like, okay, maybe they could save this scene. Maybe pick up the dog is a pretext for, you know, um, him going to get there to murder them or something. But then it, he was literally going there to pick up the dog, and then he says the blood didn't belong to Meredith, and I was like, "Huh." That's Josh it. Was just, no, but then Josh was such a boring character. <laughs> no shit. Boring character, <laughs> boring generic name. I swear. Anyway, oh, no. so that was fun. Okay. So okay. Let's get to the let's get to the chats before we move to the next segment. So we have Monica saying, "I'm doing some cleaning for old college photocopied, but I'll say in the chat, thank you, Monica. Thank um, you." I read it through my eyes and wanted to break my tablet after <laughs> I love this energy. I love it. I love it. I love it. I actually really love how... I actually really love how the people that like it, like, really like it, and the people that don't are, like, aggressive. Like, I love the energy today. Like, it's so high. Love that. Okay. So MJ says, I definitely rate books higher in general when I listen to the audiobook. I think it's easier for me to just go along for the ride when I'm listening to it rather than when I'm reading with my eyes. And yeah, because I mean, although I believe that audiobook listening counts as valid reading because you're consuming the same story and your brain is working, you're exerting brain power, you're 
um, demonstrating comprehension, reading with your eyes is harder because you can listen to an audiobook while doing various things. I listen to audiobooks while playing Mobile Legends on my phone. So like, that's how efficient it is. But like with reading with your eyes, it's like, I mean, it, it, it's harder. It takes more time. It takes significantly more time. Um, so yeah, I agree with that point. Ashley says, I hated the OBGYN scene and then a word that yeah. I can't say out loud because I'm gonna probably get um, the algorithm will smite me. But yeah, I agree, Ashley. Um, Monica says, I was angry about two things. One, the dumb character, Kate. <laughs> yes. And two, the killer had no real motive and came out of the... <laughs> yes, <laughs> my so gosh, that was so frustrating. No, but that I was not the thing. It's the thing. Wait, it's we... both Meredith and like all the women characters. And the... It frustrates me so much. <laughs> How dumb. I was, like, did a, did a, I was like, did a man write this book? Did Jay Kristoff write this? Just kidding. <laughs> We're not I don't want to throw. I don't want to throw that much shade because there was some valid feminism that I did glean from this book. Um, I'll just say the scene now. I really liked the. I didn't like what happened in the OBGYN scene, but I liked how she wrote the OBGYN scene because if it was written by a man, I feel like he would. His goal would be to like titillate the audience, like you know, yeah. look at this helpless woman. Like she's so helpless. Isn't that a hot? Isn't that hell? Isn't that like epic? Isn't that thrilling? But when Mary Kabika wrote that scene, she wrote it in such a way that you really get into Kate's head when she's being, you know, violated, essentially. And you get to see the fear from a woman's point of view and understand what a woman's thought process would be during a moment like this. Because how would a man know what, you know, the pain of having your cervix uh, examined would be like and how other men are so invasive? Like, even the man character, the doctor who did it to her, was like, shut up, it doesn't hurt. He was, like, minimizing her pain. And yeah. the way that scene was written was showing us that men minimize the pain of women and men don't get women. And there are certain fears that are subjective to women that men will never understand. And I thought that that scene was very well written. Like, I don't think male audiences will be titillated at like a, like there are some horrible books where there's like a, a rape scene, uh, the word that I said I wouldn't say, where there's like a toot scene and <laughs> it's like written in such a way to like look sexy and like <clears throat> Jay Kristoff. And I'm sorry. Like, I will throw shade where it is needed. Um, and in this scene, like, this scene won't, like, be titillating. It'll be, like, you know, uncomfortable. Like, readers will be yeah. uncomfortable. And I, I was, like, with, uncomfortable. I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> I know, me too. So, <laughs> so just to stay on her point, the killer having no real motive and coming out of the blue. Yeah, so Ava and I were actually, and Lucha, all of us actually on our group chat were, like, making um, a joke about how Perhaps the the publisher was telling Mary Kabika, like, this book isn't diverse enough. We need some LGBT representation. And then she got pissed and she was like, you want some representation? Huh? I'll give you some motherfucking representation. <laughs> that was what it sounded like reading this book. I was like, hmm. So what did you think with Mary Kabika is she had the potential to write, like, these complex characters. Yeah. That yeah. Just because she didn't know what story she wanted to tell. Yes, I true. agree with that. I agree. Yeah, so true. Okay, so let's get to the rest of the comments. Um, okay, so I agree that, that um, what's her name? B was dumb. And then, oh my gosh, the scene with the OBG band was enraging. It was so enraging. Yes. I agree. Yeah. The kill the reveal was stupid as <laughs> Right? No, but she didn't know. <laughs> my gosh. Like, literally. <laughs> Could have just written the whole story in three pages. Like the whole story would have been done. <laughs> like, yeah. How stupid can this woman Kate be? Oh, we are roasting Kate here. Like she was so naive. I swear. And then right, Monica. Kate is a naive. A naive. I think she meant to put naive. Dumbass. Okay. We have some people who are not fan of Kate's in this chat, and honestly, I live for it. And no, then but Ashley laughing. And then Monica, this book was written by the ghostwriter who wrote Survive That. I would, I disagree. It wasn't that bad. It was not that bad, in my opinion. <laughs> Sorry, Ava, go ahead. I know. <laughs> Wait, I actually forgot. Losing it. <laughs> I, I don't feel strongly about Kate because, like, I just kept. I honestly forgot all her chapters. Like, that's not a. That's not. That doesn't do anything. That that gives Kate no favors. Comments like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good point. Literally, like, 
I don't remember half the stuff. Like she was just there for me. Yeah. And then was- um Monica says the only character I was semi invested in was Leo. And I actually have something. Wait, did yeah. Monica read it? That's the thing. Did Monica read it or did she hear it? No, she was she I think, um I think in a previous he message said, she said she read it with her. She said I read it with my eyes and wanted to break my exactly. tablet. So I think I mean, I'm just exactly. Yeah. I mean, like I like the complexity of his character because like all his emotions were so valid. Because like yeah. he was neglected as a child. It's like <laughs> of course he'd been dealing with all these feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. He, um, MJ says, yeah, he totally did. He seemed overly aggressive. True. Um, Leo was a four was a fourth of the time. He'd be a very young killer. <laughs> Why is it whenever somebody comments on an age of someone, it's always Monica. She was whenever when we were giving the fan cast for the people in every last fear and <laughs> and they never learned. Monica was like, too old, too old, too young. Monica. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I mean, he was four years old, but I mean, Delilah was six. So, like, I'm sure, you know, kids playing rough could, you know, he could have found a way to, like, I don't know, maybe left a pillow on her face too long or held her head under the water till the, till the bubble stopped. Just <laughs> um, I'm not going to go off in those guys' boxes at I mean, this is a thriller book, so things are expected to get pretty wild. <laughs> um, MJ, very agitated, yes. Ashley kind of feminist. Okay, I think she's like her opinion on her opinion on this being feminist is like kind of wavering based on our commentary, I suppose. Um, I mean, you June, can enjoy the book. <laughs> We're not going to like. June says, "Ha ha ha, McKay." Monica says, "If Kate had been rich, at least that would have given Bea a motive. Money is a typical motive, but Kate was not wealthy. Why was B so scared of losing Kate? Maybe she's super." <gasps> well, I mean. Mm. I mean, but, but, I mean that is the doubt. Maybe she's just one of those people who you know how people like there are some people who just like really are scared of losing people for whatever yeah. reason they like, experience. So I mean so, but I kind of see it because I do see that like Bea really loved Kate. That's the thing. I do see their relationship, but then it's like the killing thing was a bit out of left field. It's like I don't quite understand. How this came to be. It's like, I, I know. Don't that, like, there's like this thing here to be hidden, but then it's like, it's such a stupid way to tie things together. And I yeah, wish. I never... Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I wish it was different. I wish it ended differently. Yeah. And everyone kept on repeating how level headed Bea, Bea is. And I'm like, like, this, they just, for some, that's what another thing that kind of like bothered me. They, Every mention of Bay was like, "Oh, she's so level-headed, and she is the planner." And nah, 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 nah. I'm like, is, "Is it necessary to keep repeating that?" I love that so much because, like, for all the praise about how level-headed she was, her plan was so ridiculously elaborate. <laughs> it's flawed at every point. Like, I yeah, swear, it was so funny. <laughs> okay. That's why, like, when the ultimate reveal happened, I was like, "Like, really? That's it?" Like. I thought there was gonna be something like, more amazing plan. Like, aren't you the planner? Like, where, where, where's the, where's the smart, where, where's the brain? <laughs> I know. Like, let's let's bleach our clothes and not check if there's blood in their garage. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Nice one. <laughs> no, but it, it would have made sense if it was just like all Kate chapters or like all Leo chapters. Like, if it focuses on one, because you do you do mention that you do like like multiple perspectives i do understand that but then i only like it when it's done because usually it yeah. does get confusing and with this book it did get confusing yeah like, i oh. mean to your point like it does get confusing and the thing is is like when you have multiple points of view you risk sounding detached meaning like when you follow one person inside their head throughout the whole time you get to have like a personal connection with them i don't know i still to this day i don't know how Alex Finley, author of Every Last Fear, was able to get us emotionally attached with all those people. Like, literally, yeah. I don't know how he did it. But, like, over really here, cool. I mean, mm-hmm. when you read from multiple points of view, it feels like you don't really, like, they feel, it feels like a bunch of straw men, just like, you know, like you're watching a stage play. You don't feel like you're inside their head. Like, Kate felt very one note as a character, in my opinion. Um, 
Okay, so true about representation. And Leo, okay, see what I mean? Thank you. Like Leo in the audiobook, he his voice was like, they should have gotten someone. Because you know how oh like God. women in audiobooks, like if a woman like, um, for instance, Sarah J. Mass, um, Throne of Glass, you have Elizabeth Evans who narrated the entire book. She does like a man voice whenever someone like Dorian comes in, whenever Kale comes in, she like lowers her voice and it sounds like a man voice. So I don't know why they didn't just get like a woman with a man voice. Cause you know, occasionally whenever they have like kids in animated um, movies or cartoons, it's like a woman doing like a, 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 a little boy voice. So I don't know why they didn't just do that. Like, I don't know why they got like a scary sounding man to narrate like a, a little young boy's chapters. Like seriously, I don't <laughs> Okay, so on that note, my next question is who is, okay. Since we're already at 50 minutes, wow, this went by really fast. I'm gonna lump in my next two questions and ask you who is your least favorite and your favorite character and why. Um, I will go first. My favorite character was Leo. And the reason I loved him so much was because his point of view was the no bullshit point of view. His point of view was the voice of reason point of view. His point of view was the point of view that said, dad, your daughter didn't have a fucking cleft chin. Wake up. <laughs> right and that was like what ultimately led to the police searching the house um or the police or no that was what led to the dad confronting carmen carmen being a dumb bitch carmen saying she's actually not your kid but i was in love with you and didn't want to see you sad so your actual daughter is like you know probably still getting murdered raped and tortured but like i want you to be happy with this kid so peace fuck you carmen bitch anyway so that's what I think about Carmen. And then that's what eventually led to them actually finding out where the actual Delilah was. Thank you to Leo. And his chapters were the most like interesting to read from because I was like consistently thinking that he was the killer or that he was, um... yeah, I was like shifting between, is he the killer? Is he the voice of reason? I don't know. Mm. So I love that about him. And then, um, I'll do my least favorite character after. So um, go ahead. Uh, Lucha, who is your favorite character? I agree. I think mine was also Leo because he was the only one that didn't make any stupid decisions. Like, yeah. everyone made so many, so many stupid decisions. And he was the, he was the only one that I really sympathized with because he wasn't an idiot. <laughs> like, he was consistent throughout the whole book. So I really appreciated that. I appreciated that there was someone that isn't dumb <laughs> it's like completely dumb yeah i was, I was always really sympathizing with him because like you know like i said a while ago i would i really liked his how raw well I get, i'm not sure if it's the right word but like how raw his emotions were and very how honest mm -hmm. so, that's for me okay. <laughs> yeah love that thank you um so ava who was your favorite character i think we might have all had the same one i don't know go ahead go for it Okay, this might be a bit shocking. I do like Leo, I do admit. I like his chapters. The isn't Leo is pretty shocking, but I'm excited. I know, but I like Leo, but my favorite character would have to be Delilah. Okay. Just like Delilah in the beginning was also consistent with the Delilah in Leo's perspective. And I like this. I would have loved to see more of that growth. Like trying to figure like to piece things out because the minute that Delilah was like big uh, like Delilah was proven to be like a fake and it just went downhill like she was forgotten and I'm like I would have loved to see if how Leo would have dealt with that because that was a very heavy thing trying yes. to figure out like you like you find out that the sister that you assumed had been dead was fo suddenly found alive. But then you're not quite sure if this was your sister. And it's like, I love that conflict of feelings so much that I yeah. wish it would have been explored a bit more rather than trying to deviate it like with the Meredith plot and with like the Kate plot. Like, I didn't care for those. I only finished like the Leo chapters <laughs> and I jumped with the others. <laughs> love that, love that. Okay, um, so Lucha went, okay. Um, the reason I wanted, the reason I skipped myself when I got to the least favorite character part is because I have so many to choose from. I, ha I hate so many people in this book. The first one being B, because the way 
um, Mary Kabika wrote her was was that she just felt so underdeveloped as a character. Like we barely mm-hmm. knew her, and she felt like she was inserted into the story for the sole purpose of us not having a predictable killer. That's it. That's all I felt with these character. And then with Meredith, I thought that she was just so stupid. She, so Meredith and D go drinking with their significant others, but then the two other people have to go home early and then B and Meredith get drunk and then they drunk drive. Meredith doesn't stop her. They run somebody over, uh, they run Shelby over. And then out of nowhere, B turns into an evil person and Meredith does not check I mean, like, for all this talk, I mean, like, she does nothing to check the morality of someone who strips a body naked and hides it, to be honest. I mean, like, that day, she should have been, like, she's my friend, but she's also someone who is willing to hide a body and make it look like it was a, you know, because when they were, like, reasoning why they're going to take the clothes off, she was like, oh, it's going to look like a, and they're going to think a man did it. And I was like, this is sociopathic. Okay, it's the sociopathy for me, bitch. Okay. So, and then the fact that she, and then, okay, so then B was, like, going to their house and checking in on her, checking in on her, you know, making sure she doesn't spill the beans, and she intended on spilling the beans, but the moment she chose to spill the beans was when Mary, was when B was right in front of her. Like, she chose the exact moment while they were fighting to say, I'm going to call the cops, and then attempt to call the cops. Like, what the fuck? What the actual fuck? I mean... I was, like, losing my mind in that part because I was, like, of all the times you could have chosen to call the cops in private, telling your husband first, all the secrets she kept from her husband. I mean, she kept the fact that she had had a sexual relationship with her neighbor a secret. Like, that's a big no-no. She kept the fact that um, she uh, killed someone the night before from her husband. I mean, like, he could have helped her out. I mean... (sighs) She could have bought a gun to defend herself. Like, all the things she could have done. And all the things she could have done. And she chooses to scream her plan to the one person who would have a disadvantage of the plan being known to them. And then my other least favorite character is Carmen. Because, I, my gosh, oh my gosh. Like, her decision to not disclose the details of the DNA test, shut down the investigation. And for all you know, I mean, Delilah could have been with some crazy man who was like doing god knows what to her for a longer period of time because her love for david and her not wanting wanting to see him sad superseded her goal to find the man she loves his daughter what like it just boggles the mind anyway who did who's your least favorite characters first i can go first um i i i well, okay. So I I really I just found what's her name? Carmen? I found her so annoying. Like Fuck so you know, was... like, oh my gosh, she was flirting with the with the dad in front of his child. Like, my God, have a bit of decency. <laughs> but also, like, I had a huge issue with that was because she's not the only person who had access to the file. So how the hell did the investigation close? Like, that was on record. So like that was just like that that point was like what the hell for me <laughs> like yeah like yeah Carmen was, was just so frustrating. Frustrating. <laughs> they were so yeah. logical. and then like for I like Meredith at the start but I just found her I she got really annoying in the part where she kept on saying that oh my like my husband is gonna Josh is gonna keep me from working no, no, no. well his his concerns are valid <laughs> like. You know, I would have an issue if he was like, you know, keeping you home and like, it like you know, the power play where you know a guy, a man doesn't want you to have a job, but no, he's concerned for your safety, so that is the valid. And she was ignoring that and doing. So she was like, she wants to keep the whole system, like she wants to keep doing the thing she does exactly the same, but then she already she's already going through death threats, and I'm like, you have a family, you have a family, <laughs> but you still want to like operate the same way, like. Are you? Oh my god! That's so this, true. Wow. I was so stressed. <laughs> you know, like of all, like when I was saying that she was keeping so many secrets from her husband, I mean, 
there were so many secrets that I even forgot about the death threats. Like that is like one of the long lists of things that she was withholding. Like you'd think you'd tell your husband, we killed someone, I'm getting death threats. My neighbor wants to kill me. Like nothing. Yeah, I, 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 I fucked the neighbor in the past and Cassandra is sending me death threats for screwing her husband when she wasn't even together with her husband, which is like not even, you know, against girl code. Yeah, that was illogical too. And I was like, what, what's the point? Meredith? What's the point of the whole like marriage drama? Like what what even? But Yeah. <laughs> dumb. That's why they started getting really messy. When they started like adding these plot twists just to make it more complicated than it seems. And it's like, yeah. I don't need all of these. I just want to find out who the killer was and what had happened like during this time. Are probably because I'm more used to like boarding your books. So it was a bit too much for me. With like the whole marriage thing and then with like the infidelity thing. I was like, there's so much going on. <laughs> yeah, pick a theme <laughs> and stick to it. It's so true. So I feel like it would have worked better as an audiobook. Because like I mentioned a while ago, it, it sounded like you hearing gossip. And gossip isn't mutually linear. <laughs> I know, and like, I mean, when when the narr I don't know who the narrator I don't know I don't know the name of the narrator, but the way she was narrating the scenes of Meredith was like, oh my gosh, God, would Carmen think this about me? Like, literally, her inner monologue sounded like voice acting. It was so much fun to listen to. <laughs> okay, wait, did um, Ava, have you given your least favorite character already? No, it's still Meredith. <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, elaborate a bit, and then I'll go through the chat, and then my last question. Uh, for many bit, I do agree with everyone, but yeah. then it's like, it's like the unneeded, yeah, no, like I mentioned a while ago, it's the unneeded plot twist in order to complicate her character a bit, when it just complicates it for the readers, <laughs> rather than making her like this, uh, what do you call this, like this, fully fleshed out character. Yeah. It just ended up with someone who's one dimensional, but has like so many personas. And it's like, hmm, I can't keep track of all of these. And then, so yeah. true. <laughs> that is so true. Okay. Um, I see a bunch of, uh, everybody in the chat, please give your own question, uh, your own answers also. All right, let's go through this. So Monica, B acted impulsively. I get it, but she wasn't very clever. I know. Agree. It was so disappointing. Um, I know. I felt nothing for these characters. That didn't help either. I don't usually <laughs> give one stars. It just... I love it. 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 Um, I don't have a favorite character. Monica is on a roll. <laughs> I know. No, but then I might have to rethink now. <laughs> Monica was like bringing it up. I know, but I hated Kate and Meredith. Not Meredith, not very bright either. I mean, Meredith. We've established Meredith was a bit. I mean, at the at the, at the, the thing is, like with Meredith, like what she what she lacks in intellect, she makes up for in you know being an empathetic doula and you know her, uh, her her better angels speak to her more. You know that's what her white spot is. That's her, what her glimmer of hope is as a character. I suppose if I were to defend her, that was that's if I were her lawyer, that's what I would say. <laughs> yeah. Um, Leo saved the book. Yeah. This comment. This comment. <laughs> I didn't think of that, but I agree with Ava. I am so sorry. I forgot what specific point Ava brought up. Okay. Um, I agree with McKay about Leo. Thank you very much, Ashley. MJ, I agree 100%. Leo and Delilah were my... Oh, okay. I think when Ava was talking about Delilah being um, her favorite character, I think that was what uh, the the prior comment said so thank you mj for reminding us uh we should have gotten fake delilah's point that would have been so interesting right. no, um, no. Wait. Oh, shit. Yeah, go ahead go ahead because like Another now that i bring it now that, now that she brings it up okay so fake delilah the first the opening the opening scene was from fake delilah right and mm -hmm. the audiobook they actually got like another because like there was a a woman i think they had like four people doing the audiobook they had someone doing Kate, someone doing Meredith, someone doing Leo, and then someone doing Josh, I believe. No, did we get one from Josh? I don't think so. 
No, right? None from Josh. But then we, the very first opening scene was from Fake Delilah, and they had a different voice actress voice her, like with a with a with a southern accent, you know, uh, like with a Texas or uh, Alabama accent, something like that. And I was like quite confused as to why they did not pursue that certain voice because that would have been so interesting, you know. Listening to her dealing with her trauma would have added significant emotional weight to this book and actually probably hammered home a message because there, there's not really much of a message here. I mean, beyond yeah. kidnapping is bad, right? <laughs> Murder is bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, Killing is bad. It would have been Thank so you. interesting. I never known. <laughs> it would have been so, so interesting if they played around with because you know how she legitimately thought that she was Delilah. Like I would have, it would have been so interesting to see how the author would have played around with that. Right. So true. And here's the thing: Mary Kubica is actually capable of doing that, and it's like mm-hmm. I don't understand why he did just pursue this. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe like the fact that there was at one point a point of view from Del- from Carly. I think her name ended up being Carly, right? Uh, from Carly slash Delilah, maybe her, maybe her book, maybe in in uh, maybe her first draft did have that, but her editor told her to take it out for whatever reason. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, would if Mary if Mary Kubica were to write another book, I would definitely read it um, because I do think she has all the gifts. I don't think she just I just despite having all the gifts, I don't think she used them to her maximum potential over here. Yeah. Is what I think. Okay, June says Monica is right. Yes, she is. Monica says the whole hit and run was so... Uh, yeah, because it was so <laughs> unnecessary. Yeah, that was... Oh, my God, that was so dumb. I know, like, was, the, it was one of those, like, wrong place, wrong time things that just didn't... Like, of all the people to be running, to be jogging in that specific place on the way home from that specific restaurant, it was Shelby. Why? <laughs> And like, the, like, the, right? She died when she was like jogging. So, the, like, she got run over in the middle of like a dark street, right? Supposedly, like, in the forest area. Yeah. So, like, I'm mean, confused with like logistics. Like, how far is her? How? Where the hell did she run? Yeah, it's like it's like hard to like. Well, first of all, I don't even know where this book is set. Like, it's set in some suburb somewhere, um, where you have to drive a couple of hours. Well, you have to drive like half an hour away to go to a restaurant. And it's sort of like only one street. Like, is that like was that her only jogging option? At yeah, like the isn't it a suburb? Like it's yeah, a suburb. Like it's like it just I just realized it's kind of inconsistent because like in the night she died, right? She was um walking in like so my 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 visual was that she was walking on the street towards like the car when she was gonna like you know cheat on her husband, and then so like how the hell did she get like? In what point did she end up in a forest, <laughs> like in a dark street where nobody like it? Just it was so inconsistent with the first part. I realized. Yeah, that's 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 so true. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, I think I remember there 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 being a part where she reasoned that like the only she was only allowed to jog at night because something something during the day. But then I kind of kept confusing Shelby and Meredith. To be honest, like they were the, their characters just kept bleeding into one another. Um, but so she was that, really jogging. She was like, she was just screwing around. <laughs> jogging, <laughs> she's like jogging, right? <laughs> um, so I wanted a more twisted death for Sheila. Wait, was it was it Sheila or Shelby? Shelby, right? Shelby, Shelby, yeah. Shelby, or whatever her name was. Okay, <laughs> I, I missed that part. The woman who went running and didn't come back. Oh. Okay. Mm. So yeah, you wanted D, you wanted D to like check if she was dead, right? You wanted B to be like she's not quite dead, but she's gonna tell on us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, hashtag fuck Carmen. Okay, I think we're with you. I think I think we're with her. Uh, yeah, hated Carmen so much. Yo, putting your love interest over your career and messing with people's lives is not worth it. And that is a true statement if I have ever yes. heard one. Yes. Um, the detective lady pissed me off. Why the fuck did she lie about the DNA? Was she horny for jo- She was. She was so horny for Josh. Like, even Leo was, like, getting disturbed. She was, like, three I steps away. From- I was disturbed. Just- like, she was three steps away from making him lemon squares. I swear. Um, this book makes no sense. 
Would it be funny if she was the one who, like you mentioned a while ago, if she was the one who actually killed the name? Just so, like, it yeah. attached like, them together. And I feel but like it's very in fairness to her, like, like the story was describing Josh as like this really good looking and hella rich guy. So, I mean, and he's nice, <laughs> and he's nice and naive. So, you Perfect. know, it was a trap. I know. Whenever, Certain... whenever there's, whenever there's like the trifecta in a thriller, it's always the killer, husband, attractive, rich. That person is always a killer in books. So I suspect that Mary Kabika wrote him to be like that as another red herring. She was like, kidnapping in the start, trifecta for killer, um, the Shelby going out to cheat, sinister sounding audiobook for Leo. I sincerely, like, her red herrings, the, the, I give her credit for the amount of red herrings she's thought of for such a simple story, like, to be honest. It's just True, there were so that. many, so unnecessary. Oh. <laughs> Actually, wait, okay, I, um, forgot, go ahead. I forgot no, to mention the couple, the one who kidnapped yeah. the, fake Delilah. That was Martha such a Eric? Yeah, like the, the copycat killers. I was like, what the fuck? What, what, what the fuck? Like, what, what is it the was, point? What, what are they here? Red herring. <laughs> it was so unneeded for me, but then, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I mean, did you say something? Um, oh, sorry. I honestly don't get the high. Oh yeah, that's Monica being <laughs> the tough. Monica's the tough critic on the panel. Honestly, Monica, if Marina were here, because um, I don't know if you were here when I said this, but Marina gave it one and a half stars. Like, if Marina were here, you guys would have been living, and it would have been. Oh, I miss her. But sh hopefully, she'll be here next time. Ashley Graham's clown, 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 Carmen. <laughs> yeah, and then. Red herrings galore. Okay, June. What's up, June? <laughs> I'm assuming that this, is, that this is what you tried to say. Anyway, yeah. So my last question is, is um, would you read another book for this author? Yes or no? I would, actually. Yeah. I yeah. just, I think that she has a lot of, she has a lot of potential. Like, I'm not sure how many books she's written in the past, but I feel like I this was her first could, book because I've never heard of this person. No, I mean, like the title said that the author she's the author of some other like bestseller. So I'm just hoping that she learns from this and then like just improves because she does have a lot of potential. I I believe. Yeah, she's a really good writer, and well, I don't know. I mean, I like the book, so I have like I do have complaints, but like I mean, I, I yeah, I mean like obviously points for improvement not all books can be like perfection but i mean hopefully next time she like wows us right she like she gets us she shows us like i am a serious person and i am more than this gossip <laughs> yeah all right ava would you ever read a, another mary could be a book i actually need like a screenplay from her because i feel like she's a strong she's stronger at the dialogue yeah. and like i think that point of course rather than putting it in like narrative form. So yeah, that's, probably that's so true. And several um, female authors who write thrillers have gone on to write screenplays like Gillian Flynn. She wrote the movie Widows, which I think was actually nominated for an Oscar. So the author of Gone Girl is an Oscar nominated. I think it won, honestly, I'd have to double check, but like, wow. And then Monica, Monica is literally the tough critic on the panel. She goes, no, thank you, Kabika is dead to me. <laughs> okay, well, that is a 30 bucks that will not be deposited in Mary Kabika's subsequent bank account for whatever she may write in the future. Um, yes, this is my third. I didn't know she wrote that many books. I did oh, not know Mary Kabika wrote that many books. books. Oh my gosh, send suggestions. We might like like the next book. <laughs> yeah, MJ, I mean, if you have... if you, MJ, first of all, did you like her other books? And if you did, please let us know because, I mean, clearly... We were, well, some of us were wowed, some of us were lukewarm, and some of us were Monica. So, and Marina. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, this is really fun. Uh, I was thinking, there's this other book I've been seeing a lot on Bookstagram called Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney, which supposedly has, um, which is supposedly really good. And Alice Feeney wrote this thriller called... Uh, his and hers, which I gave five stars to because it was really fun. And the twist at the end was like, 
more shocking than it was shocking. I was like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Oh God, I'm so angry. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you have seen my channel lately, but I, oh my God, I'm so dumb. I made a video called Thrillers with the Best Plot Twists. Mm -hmm. And I didn't include that book, even though I gave it five stars, because I forgot. What a wasted opportunity. Oh my God. I, I wish there was like a way to like edit in a video segment into an existing YouTube video, because like, I have regrets. Okay, I'll probably, I'll probably have to read more thrillers and do a part two at some point, just so I can, <laughs> I'll read like, a hundred thrillers next year just so I can make a part two for that specific reason of recommending that book. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> I did. I also read those on audio, but it was a few years ago and I'm not sure how they would hold up as a reread. Okay. 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 I understand. But we'll definitely look her up and she will be on our radar of books to perhaps pick up in the future. Um, this is really fun. Thank you so much for participating, everybody. I hope you had a lot of fun. Um, Next show will probably be in a month from now. We'll see. It depends. It depends. It depends. Because uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll, put a, I'll, I'll put a poll up. Anyway, this was really fun. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah. It was so much fun. It was yeah. fun, like, reviewing all your comments. Oh. Thanks for interacting with us. Yeah. I gave his and her three stars. I'm in for Rock, Paper, Scissors. OK. So we have Monica, who's like down for rock, paper, scissors. We'll, I'll put a poll up. I'll put a poll up. Because, I mean, there were other books that got a lot of uh, votes. Like, honestly, you know, the, this book was like really neck and neck with this other book called Razor Blade Tears. And I closed the poll at, like, I confirmed that it was this book two days afterward. But then I left the poll up for a week. And then at the end of the week, Razor Blade Tears actually outdid Local Woman Missing. So I'll probably do another poll where we have that book in uh, as one of the choices. So it's going to be Razor Blade Tears and what's the other one? Uh, Rock Paper Scissors and maybe House of Accidents. We'll we'll um uh, or maybe Marina suggested the thriller called House of Hollow. Maybe we could do maybe we could have that be a choice because she raved about it. <sighs> okay, so exciting. Um, I just. Started. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I like what I'm. I like what I'm hearing. So yeah, we'll likely see you next month. Any last words from the rest of the panel? Thanks, guys. Have a okay. good yes. morning, evening, okay. wherever you are. Good morning. <laughs> I hope you have a lovely day or have a lovely evening, and we will see you. Thank you so much. This was really fun. Thank Cheers. you, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.